Hi everyone, my name is Danielle and welcome to another episode of Board Game Bakes. This week we're going to focus on Pampero, which is produced by APA Games. And if you haven't heard of it yet, don't worry because it's actually going to come to Kickstarter in the fall. So this is a little sneak peek. In the game, your objective is to help rid Uruguay of its dependence on fossil fuels. Easy, right? So throughout the game, you have different wind turbines that you're able to put down to generate electricity, and then you have to put down power lines and then transformers to help bring the power to the people. Because of course, they're the ones that's going to be the money. And in the end, you want the money so you can win the game. It has a fun balance of having to spend the money, so this way you could get the resources that would then let you make the income. So there's a lot of different components in the game, but when it has all these things, I usually come back to this. It's a beautiful box. All the components in the game are beautiful and this is just the pre-production copy. There's tons of little figures for you to put on your board and you have a specialized board that makes everything really easy to follow once you learn the basic game. So we're going to try and incorporate some of those different components into our cake with obviously the wind turbine being the center stage. We're already at the end of summer so I'm going to do one last hurrah and I'm going to do a lemon cake with some delicious strawberry frosting to help give us some of those summer flavors before it's already gone. Let's get started. Time to make a tasty cake to celebrate summer as we come to its end. To begin, you get a lemon box cake mix, but don't worry, we'll make a few modifications. Measure out the ingredients listed in the box, except instead of using one cup of water, do a half a cup of water and a half a cup of milk to give it a little more stability. For a little more lemon, kapow! Add the zest of one lemon. Mix it on low with a rubber spatula to incorporate your ingredients, then mix it on medium speed with a hand mixer, or hey, you can use your muscles too. But you want to do this for two minutes. I wanted to give the cake some height this time, so I decided to make four six inch cakes. To get equal levels, measure the weight of your bowl before you start and then after everything's been mixed together. So track the weight of your bowl and then divide that number by four. That's how much batter you want in each of your four tins. Yay, math! Bake at 350 degrees for 15 to 20 minutes. You could tell that's about ready when the top no longer jiggles if you shake it. Let it sit in the pan for 10 minutes then let it cool completely before decorating it or freezing it. This was an interesting cake for me to prep because usually I get to do some of the decorations before the cake is done, and as you'll see, a lot of these are done on the cake. Our next step in the process is to prep a sweet strawberry frosting to accent our lemon cake and to hopefully get a nice blend of sweet and tang. I made a double batch and had some left over. You mix four sticks of softened and salted butter in the mixer until it's all broken up. Add in seven cups of powdered sugar, you could add all at once, but I prefer not to get powdered sugar clouds to form. Now add in one cup of strawberry puree. I use frozen strawberries, but I do think it tastes better if you use fresh strawberries. Just saying. You could also add a pinch or two of salt for your preference. When you get to this point, it's time to analyze the consistency. Mine is too thin to stick on the cake, so I add a cup of powdered sugar to make it thicker. Time to assemble the cake. Trim off any domes on the top of your cakes and save those tasty bits for cake pops or something else down the road. Put a little bit of frosting on the cake board and attach your bottom layer. Hopefully you'll have better luck centering your cake than me. Apply a generous amount of frosting to the top of the cake and spread it around. Repeat the same process two more times until you have three layers of filling and four layers of cake. Check the edges of your cake and if they are uneven, use a serrated knife to trim the sides. Now apply a thin coat of icing on your cake, which is a crumb coat. It will help keep the outer layer nice and smooth. Put your cake in the fridge for about 15 minutes until it's no longer sticky to the touch. Now apply a generous amount of frosting all over the cake and make it as smooth as possible. Let this sit in the fridge to cool and toughen up before continuing. While your cake is setting, you can use the time to prep your wind turbines. Take three bamboo rods, determine how big you want your rods to be, and cut off any extra. I apparently decided to go for mammoth sized wind turbines, partially due to the size of the rod and wire. Use thick jewelry wire to create blades for the turbines and attach them onto the rod. Try and make sure that the ends are all tucked in so this way they don't pierce your fondant later. Roll out your white fondant so it's about an eighth of an inch thick. Use cornstarch to make sure it doesn't stick to the counter. It's really annoying if you try and get off and it's stuck. Once rolled out, use a rolling pin to get off the counter. Feel your cake, and if it's not sticky at all, then put a little bit of water on it so the fondant will stick. Drape your fondant over it and smooth the top. Then gently and quickly smooth down the sides, and you want to pull out pieces as needed to avoid having creases in the, tr in the side. 
trim as you go so that the weight of the fondant doesn't put holes into the fondant. My first attempt was a bust, so this attempt is number two. Once it's smooth, return to the fridge. Hi! While you're here, you make sure you hit subscribe for new videos every Tuesday. Thanks! Time to finish prepping our wind turbines. Woohoo! Use the extra scraps of fondant for what you rolled out as the fondant for your cake, and this will save you time since it's already flat. You need to wrap all of your wood and wire with fondant. You decide how long you need your piece to be, and generally you can just cut a rectangle that long, and maybe a half to th three quarters of an inch wide, depending on what section you're working on. Put a very thin line of water along one of the sides, and this way the fondant will stick to itself. Fold it over the bamboo or the rod and stick it together, and you're going to repeat this process over and over again to create three different sized wind turbines. Place them on parchment paper and let them harden a bit before putting your turbines on top of your cake. Time to paint our cake! When I was deciding what to do, cookies would have had the obvious choice because there's a lot of cool components that would be fun to make as cookies. However, I decided that I wanted to emphasize the wind turbines since they are a very important part of the game. However, I still want the other components to get recognized. To do this, we're going to put them on the side of the cake. Start by using a mossy green to draw hills on the cake. Then take a royal blue and outline the clouds. This is modeled after the box artwork, which has wisps of wind shown in the clouds. Now it's time to add clouds and to lay the grass up a little. To try and create a rolling hill effect, Dye some of the leftover fondant a light moss green color. Cut it so one side is straight, and it's okay if the other side is curvy like some hills. Put the straight edge along the bottom of the cake and gently push it against the cake so it won't fall off. Your cake will probably be sticky enough with the paint. Use a paintbrush with the smallest, faintest amount of brown on it to add some brown grass to the layer. Now, time to add the actual components. On the box, there's the wind turbine. But that's on the top, so we're going to add some of the other components. Have some power lines going around the cake. Then you can paint little transformers going to the different housing options in the game, like houses and resorts. Then at the end, you just want to connect all your wires and you're winning Pampero! If needed, you can use a black marker to finish connecting your lines and to add some extra grass and fun details. Time for the best part! Take your wind turbines and put them on your cake. Huzzah! Thanks for watching another episode of Board Game Bakes. While you're here, I'll put the link below. Make sure you check out the Pampero Kickstarter and follow it so this way you know when it's ready to go live. Keep playing games and keep them sweet. Bye!